Hi, my name is Conica Klinas and you're watching the video Saccadic Velocity. In this video we'll be discussing how to go about assessing a patient's saccadic velocity and how we utilise this assessment in incontinent strabismus. Now we utilise saccadic velocity when we observe that there is an underaction of an extraocular muscle. So if for instance you had a patient who had a left abduction limitation you could use saccadic velocity to assist in working out if this is neurogenic in nature or mechanical. Now I mentioned in our previous um, videos on ocular movements that we can use ductions to assist in differentiating between neurogenic and mechanical restrictions. We can also add further tests to further support one diagnosis over the other. So with saccadic velocities, what we'll do is as the examiner, you will observe the saccade as an indicator of muscle force and then make an interpretation from that as to whether it's likely to be mechanical or neurogenic in nature. <clears throat> so how do we perform the test? Well, obviously you'll first have to have done ocular movements assessment and you would have noted that there was an underaction of an extraocular muscle. In the example we have here, we have a patient with a right abduction limitation. The lateral lectus would be documented as underacting. Now, when we measure saccadic velocities, what we first ask the patient is to look into the opposite direction of the field of action of the underacting muscle. So the abduction deficit occurs in right gaze, so we would ask the patient to look into left gaze. Okay, at this point we're not doing any assessment, we're just simply asking the patient to move their eyes into the opposite position of gaze. Now we ask the patient to make a saccade towards right gaze, towards the field of action of the lateral rectus. And this is what we're observing. We're observing the saccade into right gaze. And there are two possible responses that you will no notice. One is the saccade of the right eye will be brisk and comparable to that of the left eye, or it will be floating. So you'll see a much more slower velocity saccade and comparatively to the left eye, you will actually observe that the saccade to the um, the saccade of the right eye is slower than that of the left eye. So how do we interpret this? Essentially, a brisk saccade and one where you see relatively equal velocity between the right and left eye is indicating that you have a mechanical restriction and that innovation is likely to be normal. On the other hand, if you have a slow and floating saccade, it's telling you that what's happening is that the saccade is being affected by innervation and that you're likely to have a paretic muscle and neurogenic, um, and neurogenic palsy. Uh, it's noteworthy that the paretic muscle often will produce velocities at about one-tenth of the normal saccadic speed. So you should be able to notice when comparing the right and left eye um, that one of those eyes is slower in velocity uh, on examination. Okay, so in summary, saccadic velocity is a useful uh, tool to utilise or a useful uh, investigation to utilise in differentiating between neurogenic palsies and mechanical restrictions. And if we see a brisk uh, saccade, we're looking at a mechanical restriction, and if we're looking at a floating saccade, or if we see a floating saccade, it's likely to be a neurogenic palsy. If we go back to our case study of Ms. Jones, you'll note that there is no recording of saccadic velocity. This is an example of where you do not need to perform every investigation that we're learning about in this particular inquiry on each patient. As an orthoptist, you will have to be selective in the investigations you perform. And it is likely that in the case of Ms. Jones, that the case notes we have are enough to make a diagnosis uh, of her particular eye problem. So keep this in mind as we move forward, we'll learn a variety of investigations that can assist in supporting our diagnosis, but that we need to be selective uh, in what we choose to perform in clinic, particularly as we have time constraints in the clinical environment. 
Okay, so that brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.